By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is Friday and that means more action for you from the Raging Bull series. We have reached the semi-finals and in the semi-finals we're going to see Florian with his robots deck. And he's going to take on Lucas Baum with his weenie deck. And I believe it's red and green with a little bit of black. So really looking forward to this battle. Two completely different strategies facing each other today. Now before we go to the actual games, I'm first going to do a little bit of deck deck. I've got deck pictures of both of these decks. Now if you want to go straight to the games, no worries. Check the description below. There you will find the timestamp. Click on the timestamp and that will take you straight to game number one. And here we are going to continue with the deck deck starting with Florian's robots deck. And here we see the deck of Florian and it is robots. And I guess you could say robots is now an established archetype in old school magic. Usually you see a few robot decks at old school magic events and it's not uncommon for them to uh, to get a high ranking and reach the top eight or in this case even the semi-finals. I think the first time I really saw a robots deck that was kind of similar to this was at the um at the fish liver oil cup i believe it was 2018 and i think leo was playing it and one of the um, creatures that really impressed me at the time was sage of latinam now sage of latinam is a creature for one blue and one it's a one two creature and you can tap it to sacrifice an artifact and draw a card now this may not uh, seem very powerful but in old school magic card advantage is really really important and sage of latinam can give you that card advantage so uh, to give you an example he's playing with two sages of latinam what if his opponent would disenchant let's say a suchi florian can respond by tapping a sage of latinam sacking a suchi to the sage and then drawing a card so that means that you know you've lost your suchi your opponent has lost a disenchant but hey you've got a card in return of the suchi and that card advantage starts to add up and it means constant fuel for your deck and i think i think that could be a key actually in in any match for this robots deck but also in this matchup and if we look at the rest of the deck i think the four triskelions are very important triskelion is such a difficult creature to deal with six to cast it's a four four creature well actually technically it's a one one creature with three plus one plus one counters on it you can shoot the plus one plus one counters everywhere you want to and then it's a one one again now the trike is so annoying to deal with because once it hits the board if you, for example, shatter it, you can just respond by saying, okay, you know what? I'm first going to remove the three plus one plus one counters, deal some damage here and there, and then it dies. So you also get some, always um, get some value out of the Triskelion. Um, you, for example, if you want to try to control magic this creature, it's probably not the best idea because it can actually kill itself. And it's one of the only creatures that can do that in old school magic. And guess what? The Timmy, the Protocol Sorcerer, is another one of those creatures that can actually kill itself, right? How cool is that? Um, and then, of course, another combination in this deck are the four copy artifacts. So if you've got copy artifacts with Triskelion. So let's let's think of this scenario. Florian plays a Mana Vault early game, plays a turn two trike, you know, because he's playing with Mox, he's playing with Soul Rings, playing with Mana Vaults. It's not uncommon. Plays a turn two Triskelion and then turn three starts copying it using his copy artifacts. And guess what? If it dies, he can use an animate debt to get it back. So I, I think if Florian can start creating robots copies of robots getting robots back from the graveyard it's probably game over um for his opponent because his opponent is playing uh with uh with a uh a red green weenie deck so i think the trikes could be very important in this matchup talking about his opponent let's go and check out that deck the red green weenie brew and here we see the red green deck of Lucas Baum and there's a little bit of black in here. If you look closely, you'll see a demonic tutor and also in the sideboard, we see three terrors. Now, if we look at this deck, it really, really, really reminded me of a deck that I saw of Dave Firth Bart. And let's take a look here. I've got a screenshot from his Twitter feed and this is from a while back. This is from uh, 2018, the summer of 2018. And what we see here is kind of the same principle in the sense of I'm going to play a lot of 1-1 creatures and I'm really going to take advantage of Pendlehaven. Now, Pendlehaven is a legendary land from Legends. You can tap it to give target 1-1 creature plus 1 plus 2. So in this case, uh, Dave Firth Bard in this deck is play playing with three of them. And I believe that uh, Lucas is also playing with three uh, Pendlehaven in his deck. 
And um, another trick that both of these players are using is they are using the Wailuli Wolf on top of that. So Wailuli Wolf, you can tap one green and one also for a one one and you can tap it to give target creature plus one plus one. So that means that let's say I'm attacking with my Scripps Prize. Let's take a look at the deck of Lucas Baum again. Uh, I can attack with my um, script sprites, or actually the more interesting creature here, and I really like it uh, that you're playing with that one, Lucas, the Emerald Dragonfly. So I'm attacking with my 1-1 one, one Emerald Dragonfly. I can give it plus 1, plus 2 with my Pendlehaven, making it a 2-3, and then I can tap my Wailuli Wolf to make it 3-4, and on top of that, I can actually pay... Um, I believe two green mana to give it first strike because Emerald Dragonfly you can pay two green to give it first strike So all of a sudden my 1-1 one, one Dragonfly has turned into a 3-4 first strike flyer I mean that's quite a powerhouse So I'm really kind of looking forward uh, to see stuff like that happen in this matchup And I think when I look at the whole deck uh, Lucas has decided to add red to it So he's, he's gone off the mono green and adding red I think that's a very good decision because red gives you access to direct damage and when you have a deck that's very aggressive like this build you're probably uh, dealing a lot of damage early game but it's usually not enough to finish the job and that's where the direct damage comes in chain lightning lightning bolt uh, the single disintegrate they can finish the job for you so if your opponent is on let's say nine y y you know you can probably finish it with with direct damage of course it's got the giant groves in here um and it has the ice storms ice storms i think can be quite important to kind of disable your opponent's deck and 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 the nice thing or the strong thing about these aggro decks is usually they're very consistent and as soon as the your opponent has a little hiccup along the road uh, and you can you can create that hiccup yourself by you know targeting your ice storm correctly you can usually win the game because you're dealing so much damage in the early game finishing it off with direct damage you don't even get into that mid late game that i think the robot player wants to go to so it's very interesting. Also, um, interesting cards here in the sideboard or the three Artifact Blasts that I would like to point out. And the Artifact Blast is a card from the Antiquities for one red and it can counter target Artifact. Now, usually players prefer to play with Shatter and uh, or Crumble in this case. And that's kind of understandable because when you play, uh, you know, a, 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 um, an Artifact Blast, that's what I'm trying to say, an Artifact Blast can only counter Artifact. So as soon as the Artifact has been uh, summoned as soon as it's on the battlefield, you can no longer deal with it. Like the artifact blast has become worthless. It's just there in your hand. So it can only counter artifacts. It cannot destroy artifacts like a shatter can, for example. On the other hand, in this deck, maybe artifact blast works better. Why? Because Lucas is only playing with cheap casting cost creatures. So it's not difficult for him to keep one red up. He's not, um, you know, he's not, not doing anything because he wants to keep his artifact blast option open no he's playing his game and he has just a single red open anywhere that he's not using anyway and he can still cast his artifact blast so i think in in this deck it could work i mean i've got a play set of artifact blast myself that in all honesty i never use so i'm looking forward to see if it can work it's definitely a great weapon against the triskelion that i talked about in the introduction of uh, florian's deck you know being a really hard creature to deal with Artifact Blast is actually a great way to deal with a Triskelion. Okay, so this is the deck of Florian, uh, sorry, of Lucas. We've seen the deck of Florian. Let's go to the games. Game number one is about to start, and we've got Florian playing robots on the left, and we've got Lucas playing uh, green, red, weenie on the right. And this is exciting here. We saw a little fist bump there from Florian. There's a Mox Emerald turn one. This is a great start here for Lucas, who's got a turn one Mox Emerald and a Mishra's Factory into a Waluli Wolf. And it seems like he's drinking a pretty nice beer as well. So maybe Lucas, if you're watching this, you can let us know what beer that is. It looks very tasty. Um, but a Waluli Wolf now. Now turn one for Florian playing a strip mine here. Is he gonna strip the Mishra's Factory it doesn't look like it. Also playing a Black Lotus. Is he cracking the Lotus? Looking at his cards, it seems that he's cracking the Lotus. And tapping the strip for mana means he has four mana in a mana pool. Playing a Flower Stone using two, having two mana still open. What is he going to do with the final two? And oh, nice, playing a Time Walk. Let's see what he can do with this extra turn. Now remember, the Felwerstone is not online yet because Lucas is playing with a Mishra's Factory. And there we see a strip mine on the factory. Bass turn here. That means no 
uh, land drop for Florian here so he can get into trouble. And there we see first blood by Lucas with the Wailuli Wolf. Again, no land for Florian. Yay, 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 yay. Attacking now with the Mishra's Factory and the Wailuli Wolf. Three damage for Florian. He's going to drop to 16. We do see a basic forest from Lucas. So that means that Florian's Felwer Stone is now online and can produce green mana. And we, I believe we see a Scrib Sprites here from Florian as well, and also the Scavenger folk. So, uh, Lucas, I'm sorry. So, Lucas is really working on his board here. And we see a Library of Alexandria, usually very useful. But in this case, look at the pressure of Lucas. There is another factory. So, he can pump the factory. Three, four, five damage, I believe. Florian's dropping to 11 here. And I mean, it's nice that he has a Loa, but it's not really going to help him here much. He needs to get creatures on the board because he's just taking in way too much damage. And it's also very, ah, scavenger folk on the mana vault. I think that's a very good decision here from Lucas. And Florian is dropping to five life. Wow, this game is crazy. And that's it. Florian saying, you know what? I'm not finding any land again. I have to concede here. And uh, that means a pretty easy victory here for, for Lucas. But, I mean, here you can see what I talked about in the deck tech period as well. Is that um, if you have a hiccup with your deck and you're playing against so, some of these consistent aggro decks, it's usually game. So, in this case, despite the fact that Florian had that Black Lotus in, in his opener and had the time walk in turn one, he couldn't find land fast enough. And Lucas took a fantastic advantage of that fact, playing his factories using that single Mox Emerald, his single piece of power, to really step uh, step on a metal and just play out too many small creatures and just dealing so much damage early game. Wow, that went fast. 1-0, or I should say 0-1 here for Lucas Baum. Let's give these players some time to sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two here is about to start and at least Florian is on the play, which is a good thing when you're playing against an aggro deck, you know. Um, because it that alone slows the aggro deck down a little bit, so that's good news for Florian. Hopefully, Florian, you can find some lands in the second game. Because you know, guess what? No deck functions properly if you cannot find any lands or moxen or any sources of mana, uh, especially when you have that one mana vault being destroyed by your opponent. So uh, let's hope for a little bit of a better draw for Florian here, and uh, and Lucas, just keep doing what you're doing, and maybe you'll find a place in the finals here. Remember, this is the semifinals of the Raging Bull. So the winner will advance to the finals. We see Lucas here taking a mulligan, by the way. So that means he's going to six. So it's already kind of looking up for Florian in this second game. Now, what I've done, because these players play quite quickly, I've actually not fast forwarded this second game. So this is normal speed, you know, because these players tend to go quite quickly. So I felt like normal speed was good enough for this particular game. Uh, let's take a look. Lucas taking a fresh seven, and then of course he has to put one card on the bottom of his library, and uh, and we'll just have to see how things go. It's hopefully for Florian he can get to four mana quickly because then he can play cards like Suchi, and he can start copying his creatures, and he has solid blockers. And of course Lucas is not hoping for that scenario, and uh, yeah, cheers Lucas on the semifinals, and also a cheers here from. Uh, from Florian, I think, or that's Coca-Cola Florian, or that's a really, really dark beer. Maybe you can let us know in the comments. Let's see what he's going to do here. Starting with a basic island and passing turn to Lucas. And Lucas starting with the Taiga and no one drop creature, which is, when you look at his deck list, that's a big exception. He's got so many one drops in there. No Kurt Ape. No, um, you know, no Lunarer Elves, nothing. No one drop. And here we see a Chaos Orb. Is he going to flip on the Taiga? That is always very tempting early game. Then again, Florian knows Lucas doesn't need a lot of land. So is it worth it or is it better to wait for a threat? Ooh, here we see a Black Lotus cracking the Lotus. What is he going to do? Playing a copy artifact on the Chaos Orb, having one floating mana left. And he's going to use that, actually, and he's going to flip on the Taiga. So let's see if it's a hit. And I believe it's a hit here. And the Taiga is gone. So that means no land for Lucas. And look at the board state of Florian. He's got two islands, Mox Pearl, and a copy artifact, which is a Chaos Orb. So things are looking up here for Florian. And there's a Bayou by Lucas and still no creatures. And if you're an aggro player, this is a very bad scenario. We see a Mishra's Factory here from Florian. 
uh, sorry, from, yeah, from Florian, and Florian is also attacking now with the Mishra's factory into Lucas, who still has no creature, so he's going to drop to 18 here. And uh, things are looking much, much better in the second game for Florian compared to the first game. There is an Argovian Pixies. This kid is quite a powerhouse, of course, against all the artifact creatures of Florian. I wonder if Florian is going to flip on the Argovian Pixies to keep pressure. He's not. He's passing turn here. And let's see what's going to happen next. I, I Okay, there's a Mishra's Factory from Lucas. I'm expecting Lucas to play out some more creatures. And, ooh, this is a Mind Twist. Ah, so it wasn't the Demonic Tutor in this deck. It's actually a Mind Twist. Aye. That is dirty here, playing a Mind Twist. And this could change the game around, actually. But there is a Psyblast first on the Pixies. And he's losing a Shatter and a Lightning Bolt. Very useful cards, but he has no red source, of course. And there is another Mishra's Factory. So he's attacking now for three. That means Lucas is dropping to 15 here. But ay 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 ay, that mind twist. That could be the change here. I mean, Lucas is still behind, but he's got a full grip of cards. Playing a basic forest here. And there is a Chain Lightning. That means Florian's going to drop to 15. I mean, he's still on 15. He's still pretty much in the safe zone. And he's probably going to swing in. Exactly, he's going to swing in here with the Mishra's Factory. It's really nice to attack with Mishra when you know your opponent has no cards in hand. So you don't have to worry about Disenchants or Bolts or anything. Or Shatters or whatever. Just playing a Volcanic Island here, passing turn. Keeping those Mishra's Factories untapped, probably to block. There is a Strip Mine on one of the Factories. Interesting here is that Florian is not um, pumping his remaining factory, like animating it in response and pumping it, and he's keeping this card in his hand passing turn. Attacking here with the 2-2. Let's see, is it a disenchant? No, he's animating his Mishra's factory, declaring blocks, pumping it to 3-3, and of course there's the Shatter. And I'm, I'm pretty sure... Ooh, there is the blue Elemental Blast on the Shatter. Nice play here by Florian. That means that the Mishra's Factory is most likely to die on Lucas's side. That's exactly what happens here. And this was a good play here by Florian, protecting himself from that Shatter. Remember that one copy artifact is still a Chaos Orb, so things are not looking that bad for, um, for Florian, actually. And he's dealing another two damage here with his Mishra's Factory and passing turn. I believe Lucas is now on 11, and there is Scavenger Folk, and that probably means... is Flo Yeah, why would Florian flip on the Scavenger Folk? You can just wait for him to use the Scavenger Folk. Let's see what's going to happen. He's going to first copy the... Um, and in response, he's going to remove... Sorry, in response, he's going to activate the Scavenger Folk to remove the Chaos Orb. I think that's what's happening here. And attacking him for two. And it's not completely clear for me now what has happened with that copy artifact. And at least oh, we see a Sylvan Library here by Lucas. And he's going to flip on the Sylvan. Now let's see. Boom! And a flip here. And the Sylvan is gone. And then he plays a Triskelion. Oh! And we see an Artifact Blast here by Lucas. <laughs> this is a very important Artifact Blast here by Lucas. We talked about the Artifact Blast in the deck text. It is really the MVP card against Triskelion. It's the card you want to see when you're facing tr trikes. But now Lucas is not able to attack or put any pressure on Florian. And I think that's a good thing for Florian. He's kind of dragging this game into late game, which is where he wants to be attacking for two more. I believe Lucas is now on nine or on 11 or nine or eight. I'm not sure. And there's the Emerald Dragonfly here by Lucas, a card we also discussed in the deck deck. One, one flyer for one green one. And for two green, you can give it first strike. Really nice when you combine it with Pendlehaven. You've got a 2-3 first striker in the air. And attacking here now with the 2-2. Again, no blocks. And it looks like Lucas is now on 7 life. So 
it's looking dire here for Lucas. He has to do something. He has to deal with that Mishra's Factory. Remember, he's playing with three Ice Storms in his deck, so he has some solutions there, but can he find them on time? And there we see an Icy Manipulator. Ooh. That is a good card. He can now tap down his only creature. Another Artifact Blast. This is ridiculous. Remember, he only plays with three Artifact Blasts, and they were in his sideboard. I guess he boarded all three of them in. That makes sense, but wow. He is very lucky, and I believe we see a Pendlehaven there being played by Lucas or not. He's Yeah, he's using it as well, so that means... Or not. I mean, Floridian's on 12 now. And there is the Script Sprites. No, he's not using the Pendlehaven, of course, because he wants to be able to block the Mishra's Factory with the Script Sprites and pump it with the Pendlehaven. So that means that Florian cannot really do anything now, just has to pass turn, which of course is good news for uh, for Lucas. I mean, he's still not in a great position here. Attacking with both of his flyers, playing a Scavenger Folk. And of course he has that Pendlehaven still to back it up. Let's see, there is a Strip Mine on the Pendlehaven. That's a good decision. Of course he responds to Pump. So the Scavenger Folk is now still at 2-3, so a pass here from Florian and uh, attacking again for two. So he probably is planning to use the scavenger folk as soon as Florian animates his Mishra's factory. There's a Mox Jet from Florian. And is he going to animate and say, you know what, you just kill my factory, it'll cost you a scavenger folk. No, he's not. He's keeping his options open here, but it does mean he'll have to take another two. And look at the life total of Florian. It's now all the way down to six after this attack. Yeah, 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 and I thought Florian had the better cards, but it looked like after that mind twist, things kind of changed here in this matchup. And there we see a volcanic island, and tapping six. Ooh, the trike, and the trike can kill all the creatures. On what? Oh, ho -ho! another artifact blast. Oh man, I mean, if you're Florian now, you're probably gonna take shots because this is just crazy. This is just insane. Lucas boarded in three artifact blasts. Guess what? He drew all three. He was able to counter two trikes. And I mean, and he was able to counter, I think, an icy manipulator. This is just insane. And if things are now looking very bad for Florian, uh, attacking again. And that means Florian's gonna drop to a measly two life. And there is a lightning bolt. Ah, that's it, that's it. This is just amazing, like I really didn't expect this outcome. I mean, Florian has enough weapons in his deck to deal with aggressive weenie uh, builds. I mean, it, 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 he's, he's, he's got the cards for it, but sometimes you have these games where it's just not working out. We saw game one, no lands, um, you know, game two we saw Artifact Blast after Artifact Blast, and I have to give credits here to, to Lucas for actually, uh, sorry, excuse me, for actually boarding in Artifact Blasts in his sideboard. I think, Lucas, that is pretty brilliant. Like I said in the um, in the deck tech section, I have a full play set of Artifact Blasts. I have never used them, but this is very inspiring, and I'm really rethinking my look on Artifact Blasts because um, could Artifact Blast also be an interesting inclusion in Counterburn, perhaps? In the sideboard, I mean. So not mainboard, but sideboard. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that. Obviously, uh, a downside of... Um, um, the um, the artifact, uh, counter artifact, the artifact blast is that uh, you can only counter it. So it's not like a shatter where you can destroy Mishra's factory with it, for instance. So artifact blast definitely has its limitations, but it's very impressive against cards like Trike and uh, IC Manipulator. So very cool to see it in this play, uh, in, this, um, in this particular matchup. So this was the semifinals of the Raging Bull series. Thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. And next week, buckle up because we have the finals for you. And there we will see Lucas Baum again. And um, and that's going to be a very exciting, exciting finals. So if you want to see that, come back next week on Friday. We will have that update for you for now. Thank you for watching. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing if you're not a sub yet, liking this video, leaving a comment, and also sharing this on your socials. You can also become a sponsor of the show. You can support me. You can support Timmy Talks financially by becoming a Patreon. There's probably a little card popping up right now. Click on there and that will take you straight to Timmy Talks Patreon page.
talking about the Patreons, the patrons. Let's take a look at the end scroll and see all the fantastic, amazing, wonderful patrons of Timmy Talks. Somebody can see.